What is the Zika virus? Well, uh, Carol, the Zika virus is a, a virus that's a, a part of a, a family of viruses that, uh, that actually can spread other tropical diseases too. It can also, uh, it also includes, the family includes uh, dengue fever and yellow fever and some of those other tropical diseases. So it's, it's a related virus to, uh, to those tropical diseases. And as I understand it, it's been around for some time, identified as far back as 1947, but no one really took it seriously. Well, yes, uh, nobody did because, uh, you know, there were so few cases, uh, human cases of the virus, Carol. So, um, and, and basically it's a pretty benign virus, uh, you know, in otherwise healthy individuals, you know, uh, that aren't pregnant, uh, then this virus really causes a very mild disease. Some people get a bit sick from it, but most people actually can get infected with the virus and not show any clinical signs at all. So, um, you know, a virus like that really doesn't catch uh, the attention until it gets into a naive population like we have in Brazil and starts to spread, uh, as the World Health Organization says, explosively through that population. And then all of these complications that, uh, that the virus can cause start to become apparent. And that's, that's when, uh, you know, health officials and uh, people that study viruses start to take it a lot more seriously. Okay. Uh, the, a lot of people believe that this is being caused by mosquito bites. Do, is that the only way this virus is spreading right now? That is absolutely the only way that this virus is uh, spreading right now. So the only way it can be transmitted from one person to another person is a particular species of mosquito, Aedes aegypti, has to uh, bite an infected individual and then subsequently bite an uninfected individual and transmit the virus that way. Um, there is no evidence that this virus can be spread person to person. So it has to be spread by the, vir uh, by the mosquito and it's only a, a particular mosquito uh, that can spread this virus. Okay, so so we have heard, and there have been there has been some speculation in the media that perhaps it could be sexually transmitted. That's not true. Um, there have been some reports that the virus can be isolated from semen, and so that is a possibility. Uh, but. Um, that mode of transmission is exceedingly rare and uh, would not be a major way that this virus could spread in the population. All right. What is the, what is the risk for pregnant women? Well, the risk for pregnant women, of course, is that uh, we now know that the virus is associated uh, with a, birth, a particular birth defect, microcephaly, and uh, that's, that's apparent. Uh, and so pregnant, uh, women that are pregnant uh, that get infected by this virus, you know, have an increased risk of, uh, of uh, giving birth to a baby with microcephaly. Um, th you have to be aware that uh, Zika virus is not the only cause for microcephaly. I mean, there are a lot of other causes, fetal alcohol syndrome and, and uh, drug abuse, and there's a genetic component as well in humans that... Uh, that uh, can cause microcephaly. So it, this virus is not uh, the only way that that can happen, but um, it, it definitely looks like there's a link between an infection with this virus and, and microcephaly. But yeah, microcephaly is still a relatively uh, rare uh, birth defect. Okay, let me just, because we're seeing a lot of the reports of microcephaly, which, it, you know, a baby born with a small brain, um, and a lot of other reports of malformations. And I have the example of one woman from Brazil. Uh, she and her husband, both lawyers in Brazil, and she was infected with Zika while she was pregnant. Here's a bit of her story. Gabi nasceu dia 4 de dezembro. Logo que ele nasceu, identificou a microcefalia porque ele nasceu com perímetro de 32 centímetros, né? Então, estaria na faixa. Eu tive a zika, mas eu também não dei, como todo mundo, não dei atenção porque parecia mais uma gripe. Nem uma gripe. Na verdade, eu fiquei empolada, a pele empolada, coçando um pouquinho. Durou um dia, talvez dois no máximo. E quando eu falei para a obstetra que tinha tido, ela nem... troca de, de, de carinho. Eu tenho uma zona, troca de carinho ao longo do processo dele, das pessoas, dos amigos fazendo promessa. Muitos foram andando no Bofim, muitos falaram de fumar, várias coisas que as pessoas fizeram, todos, que foi um encheu tanta gente de amor. 
Uh, Glenn Armstrong, when is a woman who is pregnant most at risk uh, for this connection that they strongly suspect is a connection? Well, uh, you know, obviously, I think in the earlier stages of pregnancy, the risk is higher. But it seems to me that uh, that so far, anyway, and and we we, re we still really have a little information on on what's going on here. Uh, but uh, it, it looks like women, even in, later in pregnancy, could also be at risk. So uh, we really can't say, you know, for for certain, you know, which particular stage of pregnancy. Uh, is uh, when a woman is at risk for um, giving birth to a, a baby with microcephaly. What would you recommend to women who are pregnant who may be traveling? Well, uh, certainly uh, women who are pregnant right now, if they're traveling to a place, particularly Brazil and some of the other countries in South America where the virus is spreading very rapidly, then, you know, the best advice would be maybe to delay travel to that region until uh, after they've uh, had their baby. Uh, if they absolutely have to travel there, though, I mean, the best advice would be to do everything you can possibly do to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes. So wear mosquito repellent, wear long clothes to cover exposed areas, and uh, just uh, try to avoid areas where the mosquitoes are are really prevalent, and uh, those are the sort of precautions that uh, that women should be thinking about taking if they if they have to travel to these regions. Glenn, they say two countries are not at risk: Canada and Chile. Well, yeah, I mean the mosquito knows no borders, uh, but it, the one thing we know about it is it absolutely requires, um, you know, or at least this this mosquito is is the one that spreads the virus. And uh, so far, uh, this mosquito does not live in Canada or it does not live in, in Chile, uh, simply because our climate is, is too cold for the mosquito to survive. What about Chile? Well, Chile is the same. It's a, a more southern, um, you know, uh, part of the world. And for some reason, the mosquito uh, has not really migrated to that part of the, uh, the South American continent. I would imagine that parts of southern Argentina uh, where the mosquito doesn't live are also, uh, you know, areas where uh, they would uh, not be able to, where the virus wouldn't be able to spread very quickly. Okay. So the director general of the WHO is saying the level of alarm is extremely high. What do you think? What's your impression of the danger of this virus? Well, I mean... I guess the danger is really to pregnant women and uh, the increase in the possibility of them giving birth to babies with microcephaly. Um, you know, I, I would say that it's alarming, uh, but uh, really um, it, it's not something that most people really have to worry too much about, honestly, Carol, uh, because uh, the virus can only spread in uh, by mosquito bites. The mosquito uh, only lives in very uh, certain uh, parts parts of the world, uh, tropical parts of the world, and those are the regions where uh, you know it it mostly uh, causes a problem. And also, it it really uh, in people that aren't pregnant, uh, men and women that aren't pregnant and otherwise healthy, uh, the virus causes a pretty benign disease. Uh, the reason why it's spreading explosively in Brazil is because. The virus has recently been introduced into a population. There's 200 million people living in Brazil. Many of those people are impoverished and living in regions where um, the, the mosquitoes are thriving. And so this is just a perfect storm uh, that allows the virus to spread because uh, that population up until now has not uh, become immunized naturally to the virus. So it's just spreading through the population. This is, this is typical of any virus that gets introduced into um, an, an immunologically naive population. All right. Well, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, they are working on a vaccine. We know that. Glenn Armstrong, an infectious disease expert and professor at the University of Calgary, thank you very much for explaining this to us today, Glenn.